Mm -hmm. um, welcome everybody, glad you can make it here today. Um, I am going to be teaching uh, Beginning Ancestry Part 3, so we'll be going over some, some tips and navigation for searching the, the different um, catalogs and record files and adding information and sources to, to your tree. All right, um, I'm gonna try something a little bit different today. We'll see how it goes. I might jump over to uh, my live, live ancestry tree a couple of times, but um, hopefully that'll work. S Sister Esplin or Elder Farsworth, you can let me know if you don't see my screen when I, when I switch it over, that would be helpful. We will. Okay. Um, so this is part three of four classes. Next week we'll be doing comparing ancestry with family search plus using your ancestry DNA test to help you with your research. And the previous two weeks, we did some kind of deep dives into nav navigating the tree and the summary card and the profile page and started out with linking your family search account and menu overview. And we do, we do repeat these classes from time to time. So if you miss any of them, you can um, see them there or they have, they're I believe now doing recording of the classes that you can access from the website. Okay, um, just a quick review of something that I went over a little bit last week toward the end. Um, when you're on a person's profile page, there is a toolbar on the top right hand side, it's highlighted in red, and that pull down menu is going to give you an option at the bottom to show research tools. This is something that I've noticed when I help people, sometimes they don't have that, that quick link open. Um, so when you can toggle this menu that's in dark gray on and off by using this show research tools. I'm sorry, I've got to get a drink. It's kind of dry here today. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so if you want to be able to see that menu and have that as just a quick access button, then you can um, toggle that on and off there. All right, so view and tree. I'm going to pull my ancestry tree over to the screen. So if you click on view and tree, that is going to take you from the person's profile page onto the, the family tree that you are, that you're viewing them from. So in this case, it took me to my Busby tally family tree and put the person whose profile page I was in, in the, in the number one position on that tree. So that's just a quick way to get from the profile page back to the tree the person is on. So I'll go back to the profile page from there. Um, the next one on that on the those quick links is to view notes on the person. So if you have added any notes, we talked about notes and comments last time. So if you want to see notes for the specific profile page, you would click on view notes or view comments um, on, on that from that person's profile page. All right, now I want to go over the merge duplicates um, menu button that you see on a person's profile page. And we'll, we'll go over a few, a few uh, examples of that, how to do that. Okay, in this example, I've gone to the profile page of an ancestor, Nicholas Gentry. And over on the right hand side, you'll notice that it says additional parent relationships. And if you click on that, that down arrow next to that, that additional parent relationship, you'll see that I've got two, two fathers named Samuel Gentry born about the same year, 1695, 1691. And this one is a Samuel B. Gentry, but I've, I've gone through and looked at each of them and determined that I've got a duplicate of two, of two people in my tree. So I want to merge these together. So I'll click on the the duplicate that I want to merge and go to his page, Samuel Gentry, born in 1691. And then I'll want to merge with duplicate. Again, this, this screen shows you that the shortcut 
that can be up on your screen all the time is there in the middle. It's the same button as the pull down for the tools. So for some reason you wanna have a little extra real estate for, for the items you can see below that menu, you can always have them up there. Okay, when, I, when you click on merge with duplicate, that will take you to a page that shows um, the person that you selected on the right hand side and the and a suggestion of the person that you, or excuse me, the, on the left hand side is the person whose profile page you came to. On the right hand side, it will, it will um, give you an option of a duplicate that, that the, the database kind of trolling around in Ancestry will pull up and say, hey, here's somebody like that. Or if that's not the right person, you have the option to type in the name of the person on your tree who you would like to merge them with. In this case, the Samuel B. Gentry that the system brought up is correct. So I can click on select. And now it will open up these two individuals on my tree and I can compare them. And there are these, these bullets on the left-hand side of each of the names. And you can select those bullets and turn them on or off depending on the information that you want to, to share back and forth between them so that you get the most accurate information on the surviving person. So once I've toggled those, those bullets the way that I want them to be, I can select merge. And now I, it will bring me to the surviving person page of that merge. And it shows Samuel B. Gentry with Nicholas Gentry, the son. And if I were to go to Nicholas Gentry's person page, it will not show two fathers anymore because I've merged those two Samuel Gentry's together. All right, um, save to tree. Pull this back over again. If you click on save to tree, it's going to give you the option of saving that person from one tree to another tree. So if I wanted to save this George Thomas Talley to from my um, to a one of my other trees, it lists if you have multiple trees in set up in Ancestry, it will show those trees. I could select the Doe family tree. And the options that I have here are to start typing in the name to see if there are matches in that tree already, or I can click on add a new person. So for instance, if I type George Thomas, it's saying there are no matches found. So I, I know he's not already in that tree. So I can click on add a new person, review any of the birth, death, dates and places, the name, gender, whether they're deceased or living. And if I click save, then that person is now saved to this Doe family tree up here on the, on the top left, you can see which tree that's been added into. Okay. Um, the other option that we have on this shortcut is to print. That will take you to a, a standard print window where you select where you would where, what printer you want to send it to, or if you want to do a PDF of that file or email it or post it to social media. Um, Member Connect is going to take you in to um, bring this over again. When I click on Member Connect, that takes me to um, suggestions of other trees who have George Thomas Talley. So if I want to connect with other people in Ancestry who have public trees, this is a great way to take a look at their trees and see if they have information they can share with you or, or if you have information that you can share with them. Um, as I scroll up and down here, you can see that um, I've got my tree and it's comparing George Thomas Talley on this is actually my cousin on his Florence family tree. And this is new information right here. So that information can be shared with each other. So as you, and you, I can, I could click on the individual whose, whose tree it is and contact them. If I click on his name, it's going to bring up information about him. And then I can, can uh, click on message and send this individual a message. 
and try to make a connection with them to share information back and forth. Busby? Yes. Uh, would you mind showing one more time how to find the profile page? Somebody is having a little bit of difficulty. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Okay, I'm going to go into my tree. So to get to a profile page for an individual, you click on that person in your tree and click on profile. And that will take you to the profile page. The, um, from the home page, you can also get to um, from your if you've got the the name of your tree up here, it will tell you the the most recent people you've visited. That will also take you to their person page. But from the tree is probably the easiest way to do it. Yeah. And then click on profile. So this is the summary, a little summary card that gives you a few options. And I, I do go over that summary card in, I think it was class two, but um, I think that will answer that question. Okay, the next items I wanna go over are life story, gallery, and hints. Um, you'll notice that when I'm on the person's profile page, that brings up the facts. Uh, that will tell you the, the chronological order of events in their life, in their family's lives. It will have any sources that you have from Ancestry listed here, and any sources that you have brought in from outside, outside Ancestry in the middle. And then it shows family relationships with parents, spouses, and children. And if they have siblings that, if you have siblings in there, that will also show up under a category for siblings. So we're going to look at the three life story, gallery, and hints right now is where we'll spend the most of our time. Okay, when you click on the life story tab, it's going to open up a chronological order of of events in their life, it will show maps of locations where they've lived, um, and and it in it ancestry has a as a um, the option to toggle on or off for it to create a an automated brief brief life story based on the information that you've input into your tree. If you want to change that or you, well, you can edit it from here, but if you want to change it so those aren't automatically created in your tree, if that's something that you would prefer to type in yourself and have it um, entered in a, in a specific way other than the way Ancestry starts it out for you, you can go into your trees tab, create and manage trees. And that will, open when you select create and manage trees, that opens up the trees that you have and you can click on tree settings. And right there in the middle is where you can toggle that automatically build stories for this tree on or off. So if you don't see stories automatically created, you'll wanna go into the settings and check that on if you would like to see those. Okay, going back to the life story page, um, there are some options here on the right with a pull down menu under showing family events and historical insights. So if you don't want to see the historical events going on around the life of this person on this timeline, you can just check that button and turn it off. Or the, the same with, with the uh, family events, that would be people other than that individual. So married a spouse or a child died or a parent died or a, a sibling died. Family events will have all of that information on under add, this is where you can add custom events that perhaps aren't part of part of the information you have under facts right now. And then, of course, you can edit anything in that in that summary um, life story page by clicking on the edit button. That will open this into a Word document style typing so you can add or subtract information and click save when you're done. 
All right, now we'll go over some things in the gallery real quick. Click on gallery and that takes you to the images that you have uploaded that are attached to or associated with, with a specific individual. If you click on the, the show tab on the left, it's going to show you all the different, different types of media that you might, up, might possibly have uploaded to a person. You can view all of them or by individual type, photos, records, stories, audio, or video. And you would see each of those showing up here if you click on all, like I have shown in this example. You can also sort your media by, by the type of media that it is. So it'll group the images and the videos or the audio together or documents you know, in, in order. You can sort them by the date that you added them by newest or oldest or alphabetically. This is also where you can add or upload information, um, anything to your gallery on an individual person. So um, upload photos, upload a story. When you upload a story, when you click on that, it will op open up this page and ask you to choose files, what kind of documents you want to, want to choose from. You'll notice there, there aren't JPEGs listed there. So if your story is, a, is an image that you've created as a, as a JPEG, then you would want to select all, all files. Now, sometimes when you scan in, if you don't specifically say if you want JPEG or PDF, it can show up either way. So if you don't see the, the suffix for the file type, just click on all files, to find it on your computer. Creating a story is if you want to write a story or copy text from a Word document that you have outside of Ancestry, um, you can also upload a story to your computer, uh, or excuse me, to, to Ancestry from your computer by just selecting which button. So if I select, I want to write a story, it will, it will prompt me to type in a story title and then, and then write that story. Again, if you have it written in a Word document of some kind outside of Ancestry, you can copy and paste into, into this document too. When I scroll down from there, it's got a few other um, windows of information you can add, like description, location, the date. Um, they have a consent for submission agreement. You can go read that. Click on I accept if you do accept that. And um, it also gives you the opportunity to add other people from your tree to the, and attach them to that story. So if it's a story about a um, your grandmother and grandfather, you would want to add another person to that story. If you um, inadvertently start type out a story and it's about someone else, you can actually add the person it is about and remove the person whose profile page you came from. And once you have all of that information uh, filled out and checked the way you want it, you can um, click on add or save your story, or you can cancel if you just want to not add what you typed. All right, uploading from your computer, you can drag and drag it from your, from your uh, files on your computer into Ancestry, or you can select choose a file. It will bring up that same window to select what kind of file and it will prompt you to find that file on your, on your hard drive or um, if, if you have it on a thumb drive plugged into your computer. Okay, and then last but not least, here in the gallery, you can click on upload media right in the center of the page. It will always have that next to the last pictures that you have loaded. And again, that prompts you through, <clears throat> through those options to find it on your computer and upload it to Ancestry and connect it with that individual. All right, we've got quite a few things to go into with hints. So hopefully you guys will learn something new or have a review of some things you've done and, um, and, and get more proficient at, at using hints and adding hints. All right, that is the fourth tab over on, on that light gray menu of tabs. When I select, Hints, it's going to bring up these subcategories um, 
new, undecided, ignored, and accepted. And I'll go over each of those right now and what you'll what um, triggers uh, sources that are or yeah uh, any hints that are suggested. What triggers them to go into these different categories? All right. So new hints is when you see a little green leaf on the tree or up here on the top right by your name, if, there's, if there are hints out there that you can explore. Um, there's a few different ways to get into hints, but this is typically the way you'll be doing it is looking at the hints for an individual that you're researching or adding to your tree. So this is going to list, and it tells you right here in green how many, how many uh, hints there are. At the top of these hints, you will often see ancestry member trees. And these are trees that other people have an ancestry that, that share this individual's information. All right, I want to talk to you about member trees because those can be really helpful or they can, if you're not careful with how you do it, they can kind of mess up your tree. So member trees, how to deal with the information. You go look at someone else's trees and they have, and they have different information or different sources or different children or different spouses, how to kind of comb through that and make it the most useful to you. Um, first off, I, I don't add new information, just carte blanche from another tree to my tree. There, there are exceptions to this rule. If you know the individual whose tree it is and you, and you um, trust their research and their sources, it's really something you need to use your best judgment on. But the majority of trees that I look at, I don't always know the individual. And so I, I do a little bit of, of research and I use those, that information on other people's trees as a resource to broaden my research on my tree. For instance, if I have an ancestor that I don't have a death date for and someone else's tree shows a death date in place, but they don't have any sources, I can take that information I learned from their tree and do research in that specific place and that in that specific date time frame to try to find sources that, that I will feel confident that that information is correct. Um, view their tree, look at their sources, think of their tree as clues to further your research and look at the name and date variations between their tree and yours. Even if they don't have sources that verify that information, you can do research in that direction. And that, that's that example that I gave you. Also, you can add information to your tree when you do find a, re a reliable source that that um, confirms the information you find elsewhere. And that, that has been a great resource for me in Ancestry as I look at other member trees. And the other option you have is to email the owner of the member tree and ask them about the information they have. It does help to get context. Um, perhaps they have in their possession a family Bible, but they haven't added that information as a source. Um, it, it would be nice to know if it was family legend that's been passed down for generations, um, something that maybe didn't didn't survive to, in your side of the tree. Um, but at least you don't you can understand where that information comes from if someone is willing to collaborate with you. Okay, so when you want to look at member trees, you can click on review. When you click on review, it will open up that member tree. So on the left, I can see this family tree. And on the right is my family tree. It shows my, my person and their information. And it will highlight things that it identifies as different for those two people. And then I can look through and check out the, the uh, family information and compare them. When uh, you when so if I so it says ten ancestry member trees at the top. So if you scroll down, you can scroll up and down and compare all of those trees on the left to your tree. When there's a specific tree that you want to view, um, put a put a check mark by it and it highlights it in green. And then this over here on the bottom right or left of your of your window, that will turn green. Review selected tree hints. And when I select that, 
it takes me to a comparison where I can uh, where I can add information from their tree to mine. In this case, um, I see a marriage to an Elizabeth Dempsey that I didn't have. Uh, I uh, well, I had a marriage to it, but I had a, an about date. They have information that gives a specific date and place. Um, after you have done research on their sources or found sources of your own and you're comfortable with that, you can check those boxes and it will automatically populate in your person's tree. So that's how you can compare your tree to someone else's and, and kind of capture that information onto your tree without having to retype everything. It's pretty handy. Okay. Um, just remember to look up on the top left uh, when you're comparing trees to see the name of the tree of the person that you're, you're comparing. If I want to look at their tree, I can click on the name of their tree that's highlighted in, in that bluish green color. And that this will take me now directly to that individual's tree. That means they've made it public. So anyone um, that is also a user of Ancestry can view it. And you, so you don't get mixed up about where you are on your island. Are you looking at your tree or someone else's? Sometimes the information is very similar. Um, up here in the left, top left-hand corner, you can always glance up there and see which tree you're viewing. Okay, now I want to go over the option to ignore a hint. So I will use the same ancestry member trees option. And let's say I, have looked at these before. I don't want to see this this hint appear on my hints list anymore, but I um, don't want it to be gone forever because I might want to reference it again. If you click on ignore the hint, it will tell you you've ignored the member tree hints for, for Jesse Eli Dempsey. And you'll see now up here under ignored hints, there it lists one. Um, so, sorry, I was glancing over at the chat. <laughs> um, if, if you ignore any hints, they're going to show up under this tab. So they're not gone forever. You can always go back and review those again. You can click on the X, the X to close that ignored hint window. Now we'll go over quick compare. Um, when you're looking at your new hints, when you get to a place, uh, so when I when I close that button, that 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 ignored hint window went away, and now I see the the next hints that are available for him. When you get to a document or a source that um, that has information that's extracted and, and often will have an image, there's this option on the top right for quick compare. If you toggle that button on, it will give you a quick preview of what is in the record compared to the person on my tree. And if you want to review that information, you click the review button. You also have the option to ignore that hint as well, if you don't agree with the information there. So if you wanna see more detail, click on review. If you, if from this, this quick compare, you determine it's not the same person to associate that record with, you can click on ignore and that hint will go into your ignored hints as well. Okay, when you see a, a hint that you do want to review, um, when you click on review, it opens up this window on the, on the right hand side. So you can compare your record with, with, these, with, with this particular record. Um, I toggle on compare details and it shows the record on the left, my individual on the right. You have the option to view the document, which I always recommend doing. Not all information gets extracted from original documents. So anything that you see that, that is typewritten about that document, it, sometimes there's more information on the document. So you have the option to view it from this window also. Um, if you, once you have compared the information and you're, you feel satisfied that it belongs, so that if you think that belongs to your, to your ancestor, you can click yes, no, or maybe. Okay. 
Okay, undecided hints is where things will go from the maybe button. So if I click on maybe, then it goes into this tab called undecided. So I can always go back and review it again later if I find other information that that um, triggers you know me to think, oh, maybe that was right, I should go back to it. So you, so you can um, look at any hints and categorize them in a way that helps you the best with your research without having that hint repeat again and again. Um, sometimes people say they have repeated hints um, and that is usually because that type of information is recorded in more than one place. So it's a, for each location it's recorded, there is a source for, for each location. For instance, I see that a lot with birth records. Um, the birth was recorded in the city and then the county and the state. Sometimes there are even two records within the county or, or other um, municipalities where you'll see that. So don't get too discouraged if you see duplicates that um, uh, with your sources, they're usually um, linked to a separate URL that, um, that you can view information about that. And different birth records recorded in different municipalities will often, um, sometimes it will show just the father's name, sometimes it will show a mother and father's name. So I always like to look at all of those hints. All right, so once you've marked a hint as undecided, it shows up there and the, there's a confirmation in the window on the right. That's where you're putting that information. It also asks you why you were undecided about this hint. You can use this as a help for yourself. Um, if you click on that, it opens up these options or you can type your own reason for why you made that hint and decided at the time. Um, th this, is, this is optional. It's really to help you when you, when you come back to this individual and you're trying to remember, well, I, I have seen that hint before, but why did I think it didn't, didn't apply? Um, this just kind of helps you refresh your memory on where you were with your research. Or if you find someone else who does accept the hint and you didn't, maybe that's an opportunity to collaborate and contact them and talk about your reasons for why you think it's not associated with that ancestor and they can share with you their reasons too. Okay, now we'll go on to adding a record to a tree. So when you review a record, in this case, we're gonna look at an 1850 census. It opens that again on the right to review. And in this case, I want to say, yes, I want to compare them. And I can, can look at them on the left and right. I've checked the residents. That's, on, that's from the record so that it will automatically populate on my person in the tree. And once I've scrolled up and down on this record and looked at all the information and anything that applies to any of the parents or siblings of that individual, I can say that I'm ready to, to save it to the tree. So yeah, just make sure you scroll up and down on all the record details so you don't miss anything. Your tree is on the right. Once you've done that, save to tree. It says that you've accepted the hint. Now I can see under this that that number has increased to four. I have four accepted hints and three ignored hints and two undecided and three new ones to look at for this individual. So it really keeps your hints well, well organized um, under this hints tab. Okay, how to search by record filters. We're going to go over doing searches now. If you want to do a search on a specific person from their profile page, you will want to click search on the top right hand corner um, on, from the profile page location. This is going to open up a window that, that gives you all of the sources that are associated with that person. Because I've come from their individual page, I can, I can, I don't have to, to type in any of this information in the search filters, it's auto-populating. You can always go in and edit the search to remove or add information or change information to try to uh, come up with different search results. But it is organized by records. 
and the records are also found under this filter and you'd have you have to scroll down a little bit to see that so when you scroll down you can see that the filter by categories it lists these different category, possible categories and it tells you the number of records that are available within that category to search that might be associated with your ancestor. And you can also um, look at records by location. Um, you know, there's 2000 birth, marriage and death records in all categories. Maybe you know that your person lived in South America. There are only two to look for in that continent. So that's how you kind of narrow your search by location. Or you can also narrow by, by date, by, the, by a century. Okay, searching by category. Again, you click on that search window on the, on the right and that opens the same window. Um, also remember the name that you see at the top, that is not an ad. That is the information about the person from your tree. And that just kind of is a quick, quick glance of who, who you're doing the search on and what information you currently have in your tree. Um, that's helpful if you do edit the search and change any of those parameters. Um, you've got the new parameters you're searching by plus what you have in your tree as a quick reference up there. Right, the first page tells me that I'm looking at results one through 20 of 6,913 possible records. That's an awful lot. Over on the right, there are two tabs that you can switch between for records and categories. And if you have anything in green under matching categories here near the top, it's going to tell you records that you have already attached to that person that from, ancestry, from within Ancestry. Okay, if you click on the categories option, that is going to tell you the, the, all of those categories that the filter by, but it lists each record that you can um, search, each, uh, uh, help me out with the word here, uh, the group of records. I don't know why I went out of my head. <laughs> anyway, um, so these are the different voter and census records that you can look at it and tells you the quantity that each one of those has. So in this case, there are 45 total census records and um, if you want to see all 45 of those results, you can click on see all results and it will just show you the list of all 45 of those for you to scroll through and select what you want to look for. Or you can also see the individual numbers for each type of list. And that is the same for each of the main headings as you scroll down and see what information is there. These are really powerful filters for um, making your research kind of pinpoint accurate to locations that you want to search. Um, I just, just a quick comment. I, I know sometimes when I help people, they get really overwhelmed by the, the volume, you know, 6,000, almost 7,000 results. Well, I don't have time to look through that many. And, and you don't wanna just look through pages one, two, and three and go, ah, the rest don't probably apply. This is really where you get the power in pinpointing by location that you want to search. Okay, viewing and navigating an image. So on, on, these, on this search result, I have filtered by, by census. And if I want to view the image, I can click on view image, or you can hover your mouse over the title of the record and it's going to give you a preview. And you can click on view image or view details from there. If you click on view details, it will take you to the extracted information, but it will also still have that image that you can view. You can share this page um, to, your, to your personal email or to, I think we have a social media option. You can print it to your computer or to a PDF, and you can save it to your to your um, hard drive of your computer that you're working from, or to a, a flash drive that you have plugged in. If 
you want to view the image, you click on view. That will open up to full screen this, um, this the image. If you want it to be full screen, click on that top button on the right with those navigation tools. And it will get rid of all of the uh, menu bars on the top. When you're done looking at full screen and you want to move on to the next record, click the X on the top middle and that will bring back your options again. Um, on the right hand side is, is the information window. If you want to collapse that, that, that record information, you just can toggle that on and off with the arrow on the right. Um, the next one down with the hammer and the wrench shows you the tools menu. There are a lot of options under this tools menu. You can uh, print, download, you can share from here. When you click on that, it gives you the options, email, Facebook, or Twitter is what they have right now. Um, you can rotate the image. Sometimes images are have been filmed in their sideways or upside down, so you can rotate right and left. If for some reason your image is, is a mirror image, you can flip it horizontally or vertically. Sometimes there are there's information written <clears throat> sideways on documents. Um, this will get the, the writing going in the right direction for you. You can also invert the colors, turn the background to black and the foreground to white. Let's see if that helps you read it any better. Um, there are settings that you can have some control over the quality of the image that you're seeing and the way that you are that you that you navigate through that image. So if you have a wheel on your mouse like this that I do here, um, you can toggle that on and off to be the zoom mechanism for looking at, doc at a document. Um, you can go to a more basic viewer, although I'm not I actually don't know why you would want to do that. So <laughs> um, enhanced images. I always have that turned on because I want the image to be the best that I can possibly get. Um, if I'm still having a hard time reading an image with that toggled on, I will toggle it off and see if that if that helps with a specific area within the document I'm looking on looking at. Okay, then um, if you want any help or tips or if you want to give feedback on this particular record, um, helps, tips, and feedback is where you'll want to click on. So this is going to bring you to help within the Ancestry program. Sometimes they have videos you can watch. And if you want to report a problem with the image of the description or the extracted information, you can do that there. And that makes the records better for everyone. Okay. Then, Pretty typical within the program, you'll have the zoom option on the right with those tools. So you can zoom in and out of the option. If you don't have your scroll button toggled on to be the zoom in and out, then you can zoom in and out with that um, plus and minus on the right hand side of the toolbar. Okay, um, the, if, if you want to return to the source page from this image, click on your, your browser's back button. If you click on the back button within the, uh, the document of Ancestry itself, this will take you back to the search window. So those two back buttons work in, in those two different ways. Depending on where you want to go, depends on which one you want to use. OK, saving a record to your tree. Um, OK, so when I'm on the, the reviewing the record with the extracted information, kind of the preview. Um, if I click on save, that is going to give me the option to save it to um, that individual or save to someone else in the tree or save to my shoebox. If you're not sure where to find your shoebox, that is going to be on your home screen. And your shoebox is where um, any documents that you that you want to save to look at later, you can put in your shoebox, and they're they're literally just all grouped together. There's no organization to them in terms of location or type. I think it's organized by the latest one you put in. You generally, want to keep your shoebox cleared out so it doesn't get too full. Mine is terribly full, so I'm speaking from experience. It's hard to get back to something 
that I want to see if I've been saving too many things to my shoebox. Um, once I've attached a record to the correct individuals, that's when I can delete it from my shoebox and I don't need to access it there. I can see it from an individual screen. So you click on save this record to save to the individual whose page you're doing the search from. Um, again, the shoebox is on your, your home tab. And if you want to save it to a different person, you click on that middle button. <clears throat> when I'm saving to the tree, it gives me the option to check and move over to the person on my tree. In this case, I've checked those two buttons. And now when I go, I click on save to tree, it takes me back to his person page and I can see that record show up under ancestry sources. All right, we're, we're working our way to the end here. So <laughs> you guys are doing great, hanging, hanging in there. Um, <clears throat> all right, adding sources for, to your ancestry tree from outside of ancestry. Under sources, you wanna click on add. It will give you the option to add a source or add a web link. So click on add a source and you can basically fill in all this information. So if you have sources you've collected over the years or inherited from another family member that you just have paper documents for, you can put in everything you know about it. Um, if you have records that aren't digitally out there and scroll down all the way to the bottom to fill in all of that information. And once you're satisfied with the citations you've given for that source, click Submit. And those will show up under other sources um, underneath the ancestry sources. So anything that you add um, th that is a link to outside or your own personal information. The other option that you might find information on another website that you would like to link in with your person on your family tree, click on Add a Web Link. And this lets you copy the URL address for that link. And you can give a name to it so that um, going back to it makes sense to you. So just add the name that, that makes the most sense with the type of record it is. And then click Add. And again, the, that will sh those will show up under other sources under that middle, that middle column on the person page. OK, search filters. Um, I spoke briefly about editing a search, so you can click on edit search. I often do that, especially with um, with a with a, a spouse, with a wife. I'll search with the maiden name or with both the maiden name and married name or just the married name. I want to make sure I kind of hit all those kinds of things. So sometimes I'll change what gets auto-filled from the profile page. It will open up this window for you to make any of those edits or you, um, so you can add events. You do that for selecting on those tabs along the top. You can add fam family members. When it is highlighted in gray, that means you already have that information filled in. Um, if you want to eliminate any information on your search, just click on the X on the right-hand side of that information, and that will remove it from the next search you do and you scroll down to the bottom, it shows again, you can, sometimes I'll do a search with none of the children or none of the siblings. You know, you don't necessarily need it to be finding all of those people if you're looking for a very specific thing for an individual. You can add in a keyword, um, make sure their gender is entered correctly. Race and nationality can be entered as well. And you can select which collections to focus on. Um, when you open that, you're going to get, get the different, um, well, I'll show you in a second. So the, the one on the bottom, there are four, four boxes to toggle on and off. And that, that will tell you what kind, of, uh, what kind of sources are going to come up. So if you don't want to see other family trees on Ancestry, you can just check that box and turn it off. Sometimes, often I'll do it with just historical records and then I'll go back and <clears throat> turn other things on to see what shows up. Okay, under all collections, it, it can you can sort by country or ethnicity. 
and click search once you've selected the items that you that you want and filled it in. Or you can clear the search and start over again. Clearing the search will open up an empty window to do your search from. So you have to fill in all the information that you know about them. Okay. So in a previous class, <clears throat> we went over the search window and that pull down tab for search. Those are shortcuts to specific filters. So these are some of the shortcuts that are available. But when you're doing a search, once you get to this search page, you can see all of the options that are available within those categories. When you scroll down, you can, you can uh, select an individual for a recent search. If you want to do a search again on a person that you recently searched without having to type in that information, it has that option at the bottom here of when you're on a, a brand new search. And as you scroll down again, um, you can explore by location in the United States or in Europe, UK and Ireland. That will bring up a map of that specific area. And then you can select by country. You can also click on the map itself. And then if you scroll down again, you'll see the card catalog option. So we're gonna talk about searching the catalog while we're on this search topic. <clears throat> At the bottom of that, that search window, you will see a, a tab that, or excuse me, a button that says view in all, view in all in the card catalog. This is if you want to search everything that's in the card catalog and do a filter from there. If you click on that, it's going to bring up all 32,907 record collections that they have. Um, that information is there on the top left. You can type in a, a specific title of a record you want to search and see if it is in their card catalog. You can use keywords. You can filter by category. Again, it under each category, it tells you approximately or exactly how many records are within that category. You can also filter by location again once you're in here. There's a, a specific locality that you want to see what the card catalog has to offer in Ancestry. Searching by locality is, is a quick way to get to the, those, those record collections. So it is organized by title and then by category. You'll notice that the categories listed correspond with the different category filters on the left. And the number of records within each collection is the next column over. And it also tells you the, the activity of when, uh, approximately when that, that rec those, those uh, collections have been updated or added. And so you can sort by the date collections were added or by a specific collection title or by record count or by the date they were updated or added. Um, and then of course, as you scroll down, it also has filtering by date. So if you're looking for an ancestor in a specific um, time frame, um, then I, I use that quite a bit. So don't forget to scroll down so you can see that. Okay, that takes us to the end. We filled up a lot of time, but I can I can stick around as long as the missionaries are available to and answer questions. But today we uh, we went over navigating the profile page and menus, navigating the search engine, um, adding a source with an ancestry or outside ancestry, and a quick quick overview of navigating the card catalog, which is a powerful uh, resource that you want to use if you haven't before. And. Thanks. There are a couple of questions. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I've got on, my, on the screen my email address. If we don't get to your question or if you have questions you want to ask me individually. And the slide presentations are available at my website also up there.